if you watch this channel, you'll know that most of my work is centered around traveling to and exploring unique places, just searching for interesting environments and subjects to photograph. And even though part of what I love about these trips is just like the uncertainty and the discovery along the way, uh, one of the most important parts is the research and the planning done beforehand. So in this video today, I'm gonna share and break down a recent photo trip that I just planned and talk about the approach I take and also the software I use to try and best set myself up for success. So for the past few years, most of my trips have been to the American West. Obviously living here in England now, that's changed and uh, I finally feel like I'm starting to get around to planning some trips like a little further away that are a little longer just with things opening up. So uh, west coast of Scotland is an area I've wanted to explore forever. I just finished uh, wrapping up plans for a four to five day trip to like the southwest coast area. Figured I'd go over uh, how I do that kind of from like A to Z you know, finding a destination, finding uh, potential locations along the way that look like they have some like uh, interesting subjects and then just how I kind of map and structure it all out. So that's what we're gonna do. Uh, but yeah, let's jump off the computer. We'll get started. So for years I would use a combination of like uh, pages and notes and actual physical notes to plan out these trips and that always uh, worked, but it had the potential to get like very sloppy and disorganized. Uh, and just was never connected. So uh, about six months ago, this company, Milanote, reached out to me. They make this like uh, organizational software for creatives uh, just to see if I wanted to try it out. And I will say, you know, doing this channel, I have quite a few uh, software companies reach out to me and like 95% of the time, it doesn't make any sense at all. But this looked really intriguing. And uh, for me, I got hooked uh, very, Quickly, so basically what it is, uh, I'm on their Mac desktop app right now. They have an iPhone app and an Android app as well. Uh, but it's basically this like free form canvas tool where you can like add all sorts of different elements. So uh, columns and pictures and notes and videos and things from the internet and to-do lists. And you can put things anywhere and structure it however you want. And then it all lives inside of these boards. So. I have these three boards here. They're kind of like my main ones. I have travel trips, photo projects, and then I've started to actually use this for personal. But if we click on one of those, you know, inside my photo projects, I have these sub boards and each one is a specific project. So for example, if we jump into this one, uh, this is like a conceptual kind of fictional project that I've been thinking about for a while, living in my head, uh, but I just recently made this board to get it all in, out in front of me and start developing it. So this is by no means done, but uh, how I did that is just using uh, these columns. And again, you can kind of put things wherever you want, change the size and the color, all these little details, which is awesome. Uh, but like I have my character portrait here, some image ideas, uh, possible locations. I have these like sub boards inside of a column that have some like uh, reference images in there and then some checklists and stuff. So just this like really cool way to be able to like get these ideas out of your head and uh, lay them out visually in front of you, which uh, I know has been like a really big help uh, just for me as someone who's like a very visual person. But if we jump back out uh, for these travel trips, so for this video specifically, we're looking at this Western Isles one. These other ones here, some of them are like trips I've planned out a little bit. Others are purely like placeholders, so sometimes you know, if I'm uh, say like come across an area that looks cool if I'm on the internet, sometimes I'll just drag a board out and I will make like a reference. Let's say it's uh, Loch Lomond. Uh, and I, I won't even put anything in there. That'll just live there uh, as like a reference in the future if I'm like thinking about, you know, where should I go on my next trip? But for this one, we'll jump into the Scotland Western Isles. I will kind of walk you through uh, all of this. This is basically in order with how I plan and we're gonna kind of dig into that. But uh, I will say, you know, when I'm planning these trips, my goal isn't to like plan them out to a T where I'm like know exactly what I'm gonna go photograph and on what day. It's more so like finding an endpoint and not like a location that I'm gonna turn around and then finding like a bunch of potential areas around there uh, and making reference to those. So, you know, I have my locations category here, uh, reference images, route planning, logistics, uh, and then kind of like packing lists and stuff. 
And the cool thing is, is this all uh, syncs automatically to the iPhone app. Uh, so it's really awesome to be able to like plan a trip in one area on this board and then it syncs to your phone and when you're on the road, it's just all in there basically. You know, you're like accommodations, ferry information, uh, itinerary and things like that. But where I always start with this obviously is figuring out the locations or the area that I'm gonna visit for this trip. And what that looks like usually is jumping on Google Maps. So I obviously knew that I wanted to visit the west coast of Scotland, but I didn't have anywhere specific in mind. So I usually will go on here, I'll just spend like a couple hours and I'll just have fun with it. And basically what I do is I just start looking around for like remote uh, areas, rural areas, you know, often more like the road end. So this one for specifics, you know, I would grab my little dude here, drop him in there. And I almost just like start looking around. So right away, like <laughs> that was a lucky chance there. But you know, this spot actually looks pretty cool, this old house. So I would take my screenshot tool and I almost use this sometimes as like a camera frame to uh, just like remind myself when I'm noting these places in, uh, in the app, uh, I'll put these images in there as well. So I kind of like, it reminds myself of what I saw there when I want to just check quickly. Let's bomb down here a little bit. So even here's another one, two images right away. <laughs> this trailer's awesome. So I'd take a screenshot of this. So now I know that, okay, this is an area that looks like it has some potential. So this is called Melvag. But what I would do is I would first go back to Melanote and under my locations column, I would drag in a new note and I would title kind of like the area of it. That's what I've done with these two that I'm gonna visit. But for this example, this is, uh, we'll call this Lock, Lock Ewe. We'll just go and we'll change the text. And then under that, I would list this place. So Melvag. And then I would go and I would look around this area a little more and just see if I could find anything else. So uh, maybe go up the road a little more. It looks like there's a lighthouse here. So I would drop my little person in there. And this looks kind of cool. I'm not like a huge lighthouse person, but this is neat with like the bikes, someone's laundry out there. So I would go and I would take a screenshot of that. I would jump out and we'll make note of this one as well. So Rua. Rua Rida Lighthouse. And the whole goal is to like start finding areas and within those areas referencing these uh, kind of like specific points that you've seen um, where there could be images. Uh, so that's what I've done for this trip. I'm gonna go ahead and we'll just delete this uh, note so we don't mess up our locations board here. But for this trip, I have this Southwest Coast and this South End. So after doing a whole bunch of research with Google Maps, I narrowed it down to uh, South End. This is like my turnaround endpoint, and then gonna kind of drive this Southwest coast here. And that gives me like an area that's doable for the amount of time that I have. You know, obviously I'm coming from the South of England, so I can drive up here and come along the coast. And this is gonna be where I end. And this purely came just by chance from cruising around on the map and looking with Street View. And this, actually this point exactly here was what I saw. So I love, you know, this looks like a little old auto shop or something. And then down here, you know, these trailers. And it's just like very open and sparse. So when I came across this point, I thought this could be a good turnaround point. And then I started, you know, canvassing kind of this area and a potential route to see what was along the way. And that basically left me with this south end and this southwest coast. And these are all places that I've noted that looked interesting. And then what I did is I took a board and I dropped it down here under location images, one for southwest coast, one for south end. And that's where those screenshots live that I showed you earlier. And I just make like a little note on them. And this just serves as like a, a good reminder when I'm out on the road, let's say, um, you know, on day two, I'm up around this area, uh, I can kind of, go on my app, look up what these are, and jump into this folder just to like remind myself, okay, this spot here, this Lendl foot looked really cool. 
uh, that's one that I know I wanna shoot for sure. So uh, just love the ability to have like these folders and these reference images. Uh, it's a good, it serves as like a really good reminder, I found, when you're planning and then when you're on the road. And then I have this future locations column. And what this is, is this is basically when I was doing that initial research, obviously I was looking all over, you know, this West Coast uh, and finding a bunch of areas, but can't do them all in this trip. So I just kind of plop them down here in this future locations column. And this is a way, you know, when I'm uh, planning out some trips later on, I can come and reference this and look at some of these images and just be like, oh, okay, this was a spot I found earlier and this did look really cool. So maybe I should, uh, should check that out. But next up, I just have this column reference images. This changes for every trip, but it's basically just a way to uh, put in a few images that I think could help me when I'm out uh, in the field. And I'll make little notes, you know, just like reminders to myself about like, you know, simple head on compositions. Uh, this is like the palette that I enjoy. So if I'm working in color and I see, uh, you know, I'm looking at locations. Uh, I find stuff like this is just really helpful sometimes, especially if you're having a, a bit of like a difficult time uh, visualizing images when you're when you're on location. But the next thing is route planning. So how I always start this, you know, now I, we have that endpoint uh, down here, south end. So what I'll do is I'll just look up how long is it going to take me to get there if I was going to drive straight there. So I'm coming from the Reading area in England. I'll have to modify this a little bit just to go along the coast. And then I wanna come out here and take these ferries. We'll see what that says. So that's saying 12 hours and 36 minutes. So obviously the goal isn't to uh, drive this in one day. This is really gonna um, like influence how I break up my itinerary. But what I'm gonna do first, so Milanode have this uh, web clipper extension for Chrome and for Safari. So if I click that with this map, it's gonna say save to Scotland Western Isles. I can pick any one of these boards I have, but obviously that's the one we want. So I'll click save. And now when I go back into the app, I don't know why two showed up, but it's gonna save it in this uh, unsorted column. And I can just drag that into my board and uh, obviously do whatever I want with it. Uh, in this case, I put it up just in my route planning column and then I have some like ferry information as well as uh, I use that web clipper to uh, save the ferry schedules and stuff. And what's nice with that, again, with that Milanote app. So if I go and open that up, we go to our board, we'll pick uh, Western Isles. So that syncs over. So now under my road planning category here, uh, if I'm on the road getting close to those ferries, all those links are in there. Just nice and tidy. So after getting that kind of uh, main route and the time figured out, I'll start to plan out like a rough itinerary. And again, I'm not trying to like figure out specifics. Really the most structured day is the first one because I wanna know, okay, where am I gonna drive to on that first day? So I know I wanna start shooting around here. So I might pick something like this Dumfries area and just see how long is it gonna take me to get there? So this says like, under six hours, which is perfect. Uh, and that's gonna be like a great spot to drive the first day and then, you know, I can explore this coast. So uh, in my itinerary, I have Reading Dumfries, roughly six hours. If I left, say at 5 a.m., that's gonna put me there around noon. And that'll give me like three to four to five hours to explore uh, that part of the kind of like peninsula and these offshoots. Uh, and then in that itinerary, I'll just like reference, okay, some potential, you know, when I'm in that area, here are some potential uh, locations from my list. So I have Drummore and Lendlefoot. If we jump back to this, uh, we'll see that Drummore is down here. And I think Lendlefoot is right here. And again, I can go back, jump into my images and just remind myself about what these places looked like. But for that first day, that's where I'm gonna leave it, uh, overnight in car. And then day two, what I did is I, I said, okay, if I were to drive straight from this place, let's say Dumfries um, to South End, what's that gonna take? Again, if we drag this down here, so it's like five and a half hours. So uh, obviously that would be doable um, in that 
second day, but the point is like to shoot along the way. Obviously, uh, there's a good chance, you know, with these locations I have marked down that I'm gonna get uh, probably to like somewhere around this area uh, and run out of time, that's what I would think. But I basically leave that day two and also day three open just to kind of like know it's gonna take me around six hours, but uh, just play it by ear as I go. So I have day two overnight in car. And then day three is when I booked my accommodations or when, I, or when I'm gonna book my accommodation uh, in Southend. Cause for sure by day three, I'll be there. I've saved that with that web clipper down here. Just my Airbnb search that I did. And then I leave day four essentially open. Again, you know, I, I know day four, I'm gonna be down here in that final location, but I have no idea. You know, I might get down here and there might not really be much or I might find that I wanna stay for that entire day and part of day five and then head home. So again, it's just like leaving this very flexible, but uh, trying to like give a rough structure so I know essentially the first day where I'm gonna drive and then how much time I have in between. And then the next two things I have are logistics. And these are what I love, these checklists. I found these so handy when it comes to trips, just being able to like physically check off things. So I have a to-do list, you know, I need to book an Airbnb, buy some film, buy some supplies, but these packing lists with these checklists are awesome. So again, using this Milanote app, we'll just open it up. Uh, now when I'm packing here at home, I can have this out and I can be checking things off as I go, which is just so handy and helps me avoid forgetting something which is like almost inevitable <laughs> on every trip. So just really cool how that syncs across. So overall, that's what uh, the board looks like for this trip. Pretty straightforward, but just uh, really awesome how you can lay everything out on one board right in front of you uh, and have like everything from your locations to your route to reference images to logistics in one place that also syncs over to this uh, for when you're actually out uh, doing the trip. Uh, but there is one more thing I just wanna show. So that's the trip, but uh, when it comes to like future trips, often I find, you know, I'll be sitting at home some nights and I'll just be like, I'll either see someone's images or I'll be Googling stuff. Let's say I'm sitting on the couch and I, I'm researching uh, like the Orkney Islands, say Orkney Islands abandoned. And sometimes I'll just cruise through Google images looking for cool stuff. Like for example, this looks pretty neat. So I'd maybe click on this forum post. And this looks like a really cool location. So this is maybe that something I'd wanna save for the future. And in the past, I would probably have just like opened up notes and written down, you know, cool old abandoned military location, Orkney Islands. But often that would get like pushed down and lost. But uh, using this app, just go click Milanote and I'll just save it. And that's all I have to do. And then next time I jump onto my computer and I'm on this uh, desktop app, I could go into uh, my boards. I already have an Orkney Islands board. And I just go up here to Quick Notes and we'll wait here. It might just take a second to sync. Now this has popped up, I'll click that and our form link we saved, I could just drag it in there, put it wherever I want. I'm not gonna obviously structure anything here uh, yet, but it's just a way to like, categorize and start organizing some of these like interesting potential locations that I come across all the time when I'm just, you know, surfing the internet or looking at other people's images. Okay, so I hope this little breakdown gives you some ideas or helps when it comes to planning projects and finding locations. Like I said, this is how I've been doing it for years. The only difference now is uh, using this Milanote software, I feel like it's really helped uh, simplify the process and especially for me, you know, someone who's very visual, it has almost helped like tame the chaos that's often inside of my head. Allows me to just like get all these ideas out, put them in one place, move them around, structure them. And that has helped me feel less overwhelmed and also uh, helped me stay on top of everything, which is, uh, is pretty awesome and also very important. So if you're creative, highly recommend checking out Milanote. I'll put a link in the description below. Uh, and other than that, just wanna say if you have any questions, let me know, I'll try my best to answer them as always. And uh, just wanna say thank you for watching, for all the support, and I'll talk to you soon.